All right, the stream is live. Excellent. Welcome to the people who are uh, already here uh, for this image critique and story critique. And I think we'll give another 30 seconds or so for a few more people to join. If you want to type in the comment section where you're dialing in from, we'd love to know. Here from Netherlands. Nice. Awesome. Okay, so I've just clicked into the comment section and I see some familiar names here. Natalie is here. Welcome, welcome. I think you're in France. Stefano from Italy. Ana Palacios from Madrid. Natalie's in Lyon. Welcome, everyone. Sabine in the Netherlands. Yes, you are connected. I remember from Toronto. Okay. Well, I think that, uh, Ozan, hi, hi from Turkey. Oh, it's great to see you all here. Okay, we're going to dive right in. I'll, I'll introduce myself and I'll introduce Kathy. My name is Joanne MacArthur. I'm the founder of We Animals Media. We Animals Media was a project for a long time, which I ran as a photojournalist. And this is all work on behalf of animals. Uh, but because I wanted to be more effective and strate uh, strategic for animals, I decided to create a photo agency. So We Animals Media has 13 staff and now 110 contributing photographers. And uh, we part of what we do is mentor photographers um, and uh, help them improve their work, which is, of course, uh, going to make a more of an impact for animals. And uh, so the last one we did was with photo editor Keith Wilson, and we're doing a second critique now uh, with Kathy Moran. Uh, a brief intro about Kathy, and then Kathy, I'll let you uh, jump in. So Kathy has been with national had been with National Geographic since uh, 1990 and ran many, many projects there. Uh, Kathy uh, was the deputy director of photography at National Geographic and was also a, a co-founder or founding member of the International League of Conservation Photographers. Um, excuse me, uh, Kathy is now the co-founder of Moran Griffin Studio, uh, is editing a lot of books and projects, does a lot of mentoring, is very delighted to mentor photographers. Um, and is the current chair of Wildlife Photographer of the Year, which he's heading to shortly, and uh, has been on countless juries. Uh, Kathy lives in Maine with her husband, David, and her two bad cats. <laughs> Kathy, welcome. <laughs> it's nice to be here. And um, thank you all for having me. And uh, one, one bad cat actually had to be taken out of the room. <laughs> so, um, Anyway, it's it's really a, a pleasure to be here, and of course, I'm I'm familiar with so much of what uh, Joe has been doing through the years, and it's really been amazing to watch We Animals uh, grow the way that it has. And um, you know, I think before we dive in, the most in, important thing that I want to stress is that a portfolio review is always about um, trying to help a photographer, uh, whether it's with um, you know, how they're growing as a photographer or in terms of how they think of narrative. So, um, you know, I, I think putting yourselves out there for a critique is a very brave thing to do, but I think it's really important that you remember that any criticism is is meant to help. It is never, ever meant to hurt. Um, and I think it's also really important that as you put yourselves out there, and um, you get input from other photographers and other photo editors to also um, bear in mind that you're going to get different opinions. And at a certain point, you, you, you do have to trust your own instincts. You know, listen, look, learn, but, you know, ultimately, you're the ones who are out there doing the work. That's, yes, agreed. And uh, thanks for saying that because now I get to say less about these critiques that's on my on my list here. A few things about 
about today. We had a lot of story submissions and we had a lot of single image submissions as well. So thank you, thank you, thank you. We weren't able to fit all of them in today. And so what we did is we chose eight of the stories and we're going to do more critiques this year. Uh, perhaps we'll be able to look at those other stories, but I think what we're going to do is do a critique of single images. Uh, we picked the stories because I think it's just juicier. There's more to get into. I think we learn from each other quite a bit when we can see what, what photographers have chosen if they're able to present 12 images. And um, uh, what else here? Yeah, just to emphasize what Kathy has said, we know you're curious and courageous and compassionate people and we're not in any way disputing that. Uh, we want photo critiques to um, not feel personal. They're not personal, even though, of course, you're very invested personally in the work you do and the stories that you're choosing. So um, yeah, we hope that you, uh, you know, take this in the spirit, only in the spirit of us wanting to uh, improve your eye, uh, your cropping, your color grading, all of these things. Um, and as Kathy also said, um, while these are educated opinions, ours, they're still opinions. And uh, you, part of what you're doing here is like working on your intuition. You can take what we say, but also just keep shooting and keep building on your own instinct and your intuition. Um, I think that we'll just leave it at that. Yeah, and, uh, and jump in. Kathy, what do you think? Right, let's get going. Okay, uh, so what we'll do, we will go from story to story. There are eight of them. We'll describe, we'll, we'll walk you, we'll give you a moment to look at the images, um, and then we'll describe what we see. We'll analyze most of the images in each story. Uh, we'll interpret what we think the story is communicating, um, and generally evaluate it. And you are very welcome to drop, drop comments and questions. Um, but we're doing a lot in a short amount of time. And so um, though I wish we could have long dialogues of, uh, about the work, probably it's gonna be mostly Kathy and I are riffing and then answering, answering the occasional question. Uh, we have Victoria and Ava in the background and thank you, Victoria and Ava. And they're gonna be popping up the questions on the screen and uh, interrupting us if we're doing anything outlandish. Okay, we start with uh, Amy Jones's story. And I'm gonna, when I'm looking over here, it's because I'm reading some notes about the stories. So Amy shot this at the end of 2023 and I'm just making sure everyone can see my Lightroom. It's, um, we have 12 images here. Someone shout if uh, <laughs> that's what, not what you see. So at the end of 2023, 12 tigers and three leopards were rescued from a tiger farm in Thailand and transported to a wildlife sanctuary. Uh, of note is that Amy uh, has volunteered at the sanctuary for months at a time. And I think this is her second or third time dedicating a chunk of time uh, uh, to photograph and volunteer at the sanctuary. So in this shoot, veterinary teams and wildlife experts um, from WFFT were on hand to rescue the seized animals in the first part of the largest tiger rescue operation by an NGO in Thailand's history. These animals lived in terrible conditions and it is believed that um, now that they are rescued, this is their first time and opportunity to be outdoors and experience what that is like. You've had a chance to look at the 12 images. I'm just going to give each one of them a couple seconds for you to see big. Okay, Kathy, would you like to start? Sure. Um, so when I'm looking at something like this, a thing that really um, is paramount to me is is the narrative and how these images sustain this the storytelling. So you've got twelve images with which to do that. And first of all, I think um, I think that there are some really really strong frames here, but 
I mean, first of all, number one is just an absolute kicker. It's, it's a beautiful image. It's so poignant. It pulls you right in. But what I have to say is that out of 12 frames, you've got four portraits. And you don't need four portraits because you, you, you're telling a bigger story than this. So, um, well, and I think your portraits are, are, are beautiful. So no, no problem whatsoever with that. But when I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, I mean, this is stunning. It, it just it's it just as strong as the first one. They are really, really powerful photographs. But when I'm looking at what sustains the narrative, I see, you know, number one, I see number three. Um, you know, you, you're, you're building the story. This is this animal's going to be rescued. This is the process. Um, and then again, looking at repetition, you know, nine and 11 are essentially the same image. But when you look at the difference in composition, between nine and, and 11. I mean, number nine, I'm getting the back of the man, I'm getting the back of the cat, I'm not connecting at all. Number 11, you just beautifully compose the cat on the ground, the cat in the air, you know, the hint of the cat in the background, the men are where you need them to be. Um, so the whole frame is working and, and coming together. So, you know, I think what's really important in looking at these stories is thinking about whether it's 12 frames, eight frames, whether it's a single frame, what is a story and what are you trying to tell? I think another thing that's really challenging about um, moments like this, when an animal has been sedated, it doesn't matter what the circumstances are, whether a situation like this or out in the wilderness, whatever it is, your photographs are not paramount. It's the, it's the welfare of the animal. And a sedated animal is an animal that people are gonna work fast with. So you need to be anticipating how you can get in, in situations like this where your photography doesn't matter to, the, to, to these people. And how are you gonna isolate? What is that moment? How do you get through the hands, the clutter, the background? So, um, you know, I think in, in times like this, when you sort of think ahead, what you realize is it's this is where the details matter getting in either on four or five, you know, get in, whether it's something as simple as a hand on the paw, um, you know, whatever it might be, but get rid of all that background clutter and focus on what's important here, which is that human wildlife connection at that particular moment. Um, you know, six, um, I think if you could have been just a little bit closer, again, trying to feel the connection and the emotion of the moment, but, but this is in terms of keeping the narrative flow going, this is working. Whereas if you go back to the, um, the thumbnails, Joe, num oh, number eight, it, it's just, it's a grab shot. It's not, it's not taking you anywhere at all. So th this is when you need to look at, at the images that you have in hand and say, I don't have 12 that carry the narrative. I may have, I may have six, I may have eight. And you've got to really reduce and you've got to cut and bring that down so that an editor is going to see that you can sustain the narrative. Um, and also just remember things like this, the big scene, details, moment, all of that matters. Um, but I do think um, your, your portraits of these of these tigers are, are really, they're heartbreaking and they're beautiful. Um, it's just that in this particular narrative, I don't think you need all four of them. I think one of the fun things is that uh, once you hear a critique like this and you are able to plainly see, oh, I can pluck out three of these portraits, it leaves room uh, <laughs> for more images. You can uh, envision what you already have or what needs to uh, to be done. Um, Katty, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. This one, let's see if I can get these both up here. Yeah. It's funny, you know, I actually liked the image on the left more because of the geometry of it. I had a nice time looking around the image and I felt that what was most important was at the center of the man and the animal and the animal in a cage. I did want to see more of the background because then I'd get a sense of the geography of the place. Like, oh, this is where we're going. So I felt like this was an almost image, but uh, but you swayed me a bit because I much preferred left than right. But mm -hmm. now that you described the right, I can, I can appreciate it a lot more. I think, um, you know, it, it's always, it's matters of degree. Um, I don't need to see the back end of that ambulance on the left-hand side of the image on the left. Yeah. Um, and I don't feel in spite of the hands on the cage, um, 
that, that there's a connection. You know, the guy's, he's got his back going this way, the tiger's going that way. Whereas the one on the right, I'm looking, the, the tiger that's on the ground, I'm looking right at that at that face. And, and it feels like, um, you know, the one on the ground, the one still up in the air, the one in the background, you sort of got this, this, this trifecta that's happening mm -hmm. for me between the cages and the way it sweeps. And then you come up to, you get the little hint of the lift on the, on the, um, you know, the top left. So there's sort of almost a circular thing that, that happens and pulls me in there. Mm hmm. Sabine says, I had the same. First, I liked the left because of the tiger being on such a weird place, but now maybe right. <laughs> That's why these critiques are so much fun. Um, yeah. And it's very subjective. I mean, if you hadn't, I mean, in my opinion, if you hadn't gotten 11, you know, nine certainly would have moved the narrative along. But I just want to follow up on one thing that, that Joe was saying about, you know, you see you've got, you know, four of the same You've got four portraits, you've got two transport. Um, so if they had come out, what would you have put in? The other thing to keep in mind is, it's not necessarily always what you put in, but you've got enough to take to an editor and say, I'm onto something, do you like what you see? This is what I can go back and do with your support. So again, sometimes less is more in trying to sell the story, especially if you're looking for an opportunity to go back. So Kathy, if Amy was bringing this story to you or to National Geographic, would you suggest to her that she come with six images and not 12? Yeah, I, well, definitely. You need you need to cut it down um, just because you don't need those four portraits. You don't need the two transports. And the very last image there does nothing for you. There's not a tiger in the grass. Um, OK, I see. I guess I wondered whether six would seem like too little, like too undeveloped. But I see your point. Eight maybe, but you know, you don't you, you don't have a full story, so don't try to sell it as a full story. Nice, yeah. And this one, number twelve, uh, is it not a decent uh, scene setting? How would if you wanted like a you know, here's the location I'm working in image. Um, this is obviously not it, but yeah. I need to see, if you're going to show me this, I need to see a big cat in that grass. I, I need to, you're, you're talking about, you know, the payoff here is that these animals are going to feel grass on their paws for the very first time ever. Yeah. And, and if this is where that's going to happen, I need to see it. Okay. Uh, Sabina asks, how would you choose between these portraits? Um, I think, so this one we feel, so Amy had a sense that this was the strongest because she put it at the first, as the first. I, I think that's correct. I think this one would be a second. Yeah. Um, but then we have number two, we already have tigers behind cages, like in number three. And number yeah. this one here, I feel is the weakest. <laughs> I agree. And we just were told to move on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. I agree. I agree. Those are the two strongest and they're, they are beautiful. <laughs> Uh, okay, so now we have Anna Palacios' work. Um, just scrolling down to those notes. At an animal sanctuary on the island of Mallorca, run solely by an English woman, Nicole, e run by uh, solely by an English woman, Nicole Eden. Nicole is vegan and an animal rights activist. Fights every day for survival due to a lack of resources and funds. About fifty domestic animals in the sanctuary depend on her luck and strength every single day. She is exhausted but determined to make her project work. You've had a chance to look at the twelve, so now we're just going to do a, a quick look at the individuals. This is a sheep, uh, one of her beloved sheep who's just been euthanized. Okay. Uh, I, I just wanna say, I really like that this tells the story of a day. It's very much a day in the life of, and it looks like it's morning it's morning in the top left and she's taking you through even you know the sunset hours into evening i, I think that is a really lovely flow um something else i want to add is that there are some really nice aha moments 
here. Like I absolutely love this image. I just am really immersed. I feel like I'm in the living room. There's so much, the kitchen, there's so much to take in. Um, you know, look at the messy floor because she has so many animals. Um, look at her posture. She, she says so much of being tired and and but also determined and working hard. And then interestingly for me, the lamb is central to the image, but the lamb is actually the last individual that I see as my eye travels across the picture. And I'm actually really happy that it takes me a moment to see the lamb because the lamb is like a nice surprise. And uh, I felt this way with this image as well. You know, there's, you know what's going on, you know someone beloved has just been euthanized, but then you see their leg and it's like, oh, wow, it, it really makes it personal. And I, I kind of like that it, it took me a moment. Sometimes I don't like that in a picture, but I like it in this case. Kathy, what about you? Um, well, Anna, first of all, um, I guess we're kind of meeting high. Um, I, I'm a huge fan of your work. Um, so um, this this is delightful. And I would have to agree with um, Joe that that sort of sense of day in the life of, I think is, is, is what comes through most here. That opening image, again, in setting the scene um, is, is absolutely fantastic. I mean, and it's, it's everything, the, the way you have to work your way from the front of the photo all the way to the back. And, and, you know, not the payoff, not only is that you, you get to the, the lamb in diapers, but you, it's her body language um, that really, for me, pulls this particular frame together because you just sort of feel this, not only sense of mission, but kind of exhaustion. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I think it's it's really, it's a lovely, it's a lovely, lovely moment. I think, um, <laughs> well, I know, a little fan moment here, hi. <laughs> um, it's, um, I guess I feel that though, in, in terms of, uh, of again, narrative and, and day in the life, it starts to um, bog down a little bit for me between six, seven and eight, um, because I'm, I'm so fascinated with what she's doing here on the ranch with, with the animals. And I felt like I got a little off track. And then you bring us right back in where she's having to have the, the sheep euthanized. And again, as, as Joe said, I mean, number 10, you know, narratively is, is just so, um, it's really heartbreaking. Um, it's, it's subtle, it's very subtle, but it's, it's, um, it's powerful. And, and I, so I, I feel like when, when I see number 10, when I see that, that first image, it, it to me, it's just like, it, it's, it's like everything, the palette, the moment, it, it's so much about how you approach these things. And I just, I kind of, I, I love that. Um, yeah, and, and again, I think you get that in, in number six, you know, here she is, she's just, I mean, this is her life. I mean, you know, I mean, who has, who has lambs with diapers? I mean, is it just such bizarre juxtapositions in, in all of these images as you go through and you're able to sustain. And I also think in terms of flow, um, you've, you've given me nice sort of moment, scene, detail, I get to come back out, I breathe a little, moment, scene, detail. So narratively, um, there's something that's really nice that's happening in the flow. I feel that uh, number seven, uh, like uh, it's adorable, but I'm not sure it needs to be in, in the story. This The previous image is just more important. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so on the one hand, nice detail, but on the other, I'm like, mm, it, it stands out as very different. Well, these these three, I mean, I think six sustains mm -hmm. in this particular story day in the life of, but but seven and eight feel like they're going in a different direction. You, you've taken me, you've sort of taken me out of Eden, um, which is the story you're you're telling, this Garden of Eden, and um, and I want I want to stay in the garden. Ah, but her name is Nicole Eden. <laughs> so we're following her. <laughs> She's gone to a protest. Mm -hmm. I don't mind it so much. Um, uh, something about number two, you know, she's it's day in the life. This is part of what she does in her morning. But I just don't think it's great as a single image. The um, the lighting isn't quite there. You're dealing with harsh lighting, and it's on the one hand a nice moment, but there's just too much cacophony around her, and uh, and um, 
I think this one is like somehow like beautiful lighting, but a little bit flat. And I think maybe I'm just not getting the perfect interaction with her and the animal or something. Kathy, what do you think? Well, it's, I mean, it felt like, um, I, I think you nailed it. It felt like a day in. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, it, and it feels like it's a very rich story and one that's worth going back and um, and sticking with a little bit. And I feel, yeah. you know, again, th that that opening image is is just just draws me right in. You know, nine and ten show just how emotionally rich um, this story can be. Mm. Um, you know, e even even six again, just sort of the the you know yeah. this this life that she's living and. Um, so, but I think it, it's it, it it there are moments in here. But what I said, it, it, what I feel it says is that this is a story worth pursuing and going back to. It feels like you started something that has great potential. I agree. I do want to highlight these two. I was talking about the one on the left, just not quite making it for me. But then we have on the right, we have this fantastic shake of the pig who's you know being sprayed or has some water, and everyone's having fun. You've got the nice smile. Um, like still not a perfect picture, then again, what is? Um, but I would, you know, if I was doing a call here of images, I, I would call the one on the left and keep the one on the right. Yeah, Stru structurally, the one with the pig, you've got a great, you've got a great stage. I mean, the tree bisecting the, the, the pig on the one side. Um, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I messed up there. Okay, well, uh, shall we move on to the next story? Sure. Okay, so this is a story on uh, a milk colony. This is by Annie Pixels using a pseudonym in India. Um, this is a sprawling area in a suburb of Mumbai, uh, which contains thousands of dairy buffaloes and cows. Um, they have built 30 dairy units, these animals, uh, there are about 600 buffaloes in each one, total about 16,000 animals. Um, they live in really poor conditions. They live on concrete and they get out about once a day to um, just get outside the building and drink, uh, drink some water. Okay, I'll walk you through each image. Kathy, would you like to lead? Sure. Um, so I know in your notes you had you actually asked a question um, about uh, reducing noise, and I'm I'm just going to say I'm not I'm not very technical, um, but I think uh, from what I've heard that working in Lightroom it is okay to be going in and um, re reducing noise. You know, obviously. I wouldn't be heavy handed with with any of that. But um, but in terms of the story, I guess my my initial question was, how welcome were you um, at this venue? It, it, it doesn't look like anyone uh, is perturbed by you being there. So I think um, I think you, there's great opportunity for something. Uh, at this at this site. I think it's a really interesting story. But I think that the um, the selection of images is is suffering from uh, a perspective um, and again and and some repetition and you know it, you you have a few frames here that I think um, um, are the, the the building blocks of the story I mean I think n number nine is just is really really poignant um, and uh, you know very 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 nicely done I think um, but if you go back um, to the grid, Joe, um, you know, it, it, number six is, is, you know, what I think you're seeing in many of these is, is a photo that I think I want you to get in and, and make a little better. Like, um, 
what what I see throughout this, and I, I realize it's a dairy, but I'm getting a lot of cow butt here. And a, uh, not only the backsides of cows, but the backsides of people. And when you've got them, the opportunity and you can get in like on number six and just a little tighter and isolate, here he is in the middle of this of this of this barn. You've got this beautiful background light. I wish you could see my hands. I'm like coming in on it. But what I feel um, is that you you were sort of you were you were giving me too much in every single photograph instead of actually trying to isolate. What's the moment? You know what is the best? What what is your dance? You've got to dance. Oh, there's a frame. I, oh, that's amazing. Now I'm going to get a little tighter. Now I may go vertical. Now I'm going to come over here. And I and maybe you were doing that, and maybe this is your edit. But when you look at all of these images, it's the same. You, you're giving me, in almost every situation, you're giving me more than I want. And you're not necessarily waiting for the moment to happen. You, you're, you're seeing the scene. You've got the stage set, like number three. There's there the, all the milk cans in the back of that truck. What's going to make this a photograph is somebody coming in and hauling that last can of milk and putting it in that truck. This 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 again. This is a scene. You, the stage is set. You're waiting for something to happen here, and it hasn't happened yet. So this is a question of you, you hang around and you wait, uh, or you move on because maybe you've missed that moment. Number one, backside of guys, backside of cows. Again, it doesn't look like anybody's bothered by you being here. So maybe you could have gotten in, you know, starting with this guy in the red shirt and photographed from the front, looking back. Um, or again, details. You need some details in here. I, I need hands, you know, on these udders. I need, I need a little bit of balance and moment in here. And you came close in any number of, of these of these images. Um but but um, and again, what's really interesting to me, and it's something you should be paying attention to when you look at your own work. Physically, number two, number four, and number nine, that body language in an odd way is all the same. The turn of those heads. Again, these are just funny little things. Not a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all but you're doing it and you may not even be aware that you're picking up on this, on this particular kind of body language or shape in your images. And you, you should think about that as, as you move off. Um, okay. So how can we shoot from the left and try to what? Well, again, that's why I'm asking. It didn't look like anyone had a problem with you being here. So, I mean, I do understand that often, you know, you, you are working in situations where you have to be really careful about that. But if you do have access, then go for it. And if you can't, then there are different ways to get in. You know, again, those hands in the udders might have been a more impactful and you've not given anyone away. Um, or, you know, somebody from, well, I don't know if they're ever gentle with these animals, but there are different ways to do it. But if you can show people, um, or even in number seven, where you've, you've, you're, you're making that human connection. The guy is pulling the milk, pouring the milk. You could just sort of wish that there'd been just a little more, um, a little less distance between the milk and the cow. Because clearly, you, you know, those eyes, that cow is there, he's looking, but it's just a little bit lost with the distance between. So, you know, that's, that's what I would say. M more than anything here, I think you need, you need to be, um, you need to be changing up your perspective. Um, you need to be balancing um, how you're putting the stories together visually. There's, there's, there's got to be, there's got to be detail. There's got to be moment. There's got to be scene. And I do think you need to be thinking about a little bit less. Even with number five, um, I, I just took it into Lightroom and, and just very quickly cropped it down a little bit and just even losing a little bit of that foreground and uh, right side makes that picture come out at you. It has far more impact. So um, th that would be my advice. I was also thinking a lot about framing and how little tweaks in framing 
could improve the image quite a bit. Like I find that right side and the the, the dip there and the concrete distracting. Um, yeah, and something about approaching people, it seems that you are welcome there. And sometimes uh, for me, it requires a little, little bravery to put myself in front of them instead of behind them. I would have taken this picture too, and then I probably would have been nervous to go and, and be more in their faces. Um, in which case I sort of come, summon my courage and then sit with them and smile and, um, you know, be, cur be curious about them. And I find that that's where my more successful images happen. I find this to be incredibly strong and also well cropped, except maybe we want to just see the whole face of the, the guy on the left. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is a great image. I think it's a great scene setter. I know Kathy wants someone, someone in there. But it says a lot. Uh, it even shows that you're in a big city. And uh, I like the way my eye travels across it. I like the colors. But what I would do is I would color correct. I would work on the color correction, color grading to bring out those buffaloes because they're an afterthought in the picture. And it even looks like there's a bird sitting on one of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I would work on like really subtle color grading to make sure that they are a little more central in the picture. Um, and then cropping here again, the, like on the right, the space on the right and a bit on the bottom is a bit unnecessary. Um, and uh, I'm curious to know if you got an Im this image, but with the cow's eyes in focus instead of the milk uh, as a central feature. I think that could make a better picture. And again, cropping. I don't think we need quite so much of the detail on the left and on, and on the right. Uh, yeah, and Kathy, if you were to pick one of these, would you exclude one and keep the other? I would probably go for the one on the right, just because the man in the background draws me in. But um, yeah, it's huh. a lot. I gotta work. I gotta work my way through it a lot. Yeah. yeah. I find the man on the in the background kind of posing, even if he is stretching, which to me gives this authentic, inauthentic uh, mm -hmm. moment within the picture. And I like the one on the left because of the you know, kind of rule of thirds component to it. Mm -hmm. I feel like there are three things to look at and I'm, I'm attracted to that. <laughs> I can't get past the cow butt in the left bottom. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. You know what? It's so funny. I didn't even really notice the cow butt. Huh. Okay, let's move on to the next story. Going to the photographer's notes here. So this was shot in Canada uh, at, in 2023. Uh, these are two fur and feather groups hosted back-to-back -back weekend sales for breeders and sellers. Um, this is a dangerous situation because it's a breeding ground for zoonotic diseases. Um, Ira seemed to have spent a number of hours there documenting the, the conditions of the animals. Um, many appeared to be sick and injured. Um, these events were given permission to proceed despite persistent threat of avian flu. And that is why Ira went to photograph that because it was a, an investigation for animal justice and animal justice went ahead to, uh, to campaign with these images. Uh, of note is also that Ira included a combination of images. They weren't sure if they even liked all the images, um, but wanted a critique of them and, and wanted to know like what should be included and what, what should not be, what's strong and what isn't. Okay, I'll go through each. And because Ira wanted uh, a critique of the individual images, I'm not actually sure if they were put in order or if it's just like, you know, here's a few images from the day. I'm not sure if these were styled to be a photo essay. Kathy. Yeah. Um, well, again, you know, I think 
so much of what um, the members of we animals do is is really brave. I mean, you guys put yourselves into um, challenge, challenging situations to bring back um, the evidence. And I, I think in this particular, so it, it, you know, sometimes it makes it really hard to look at, at, at these images and critique you as a photographer, because in many instances, you're producing evidence more than you're producing photographs. Um, you know, you, you, if, if you're there, posing as a buyer and not a photographer, you know, then, then you can't really be working these situations. So, um, you know, that said, when, when I looked at, at this set of images, I, I was thinking, you know, um, visually, you know, what stood out for me as, as, the, as sort of the, the, the most compelling images were number one, uh, number three, and number, number 11. And, and, you know, my question in looking at uh, at this narratively was, well, this is something about um, birds, but you know we're starting with an image that's not birds. But as a photograph, um, I, I think it's I think it's quite I think it's quite nice. Um, you know, I, I love the the way that the, the 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 goats line up in their little cage, and I love the person sitting on the um, uh, you know on the boxes in the background. Uh, I thought there was just something that was just sort of some very, very fey about the peacock and the way, you know, this feather sort of streamed out there. I mean, it's, 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 it's almost comical and almost awful at, at the same time. Um, and then in the very last um, photograph where you've got the guy, um, you know, coming down, carrying a bird, and there's the person, the juxtaposition of the person you know, with the baby carrier and, I just, for me, the way it sort of filled the frame with all these different little moments of, with, with with people, I thought was was really really um, terrific. I think you know the the other images. I mean, th these three to me feel photographic. The others, in in many respects, again, as I said, this this feels like evidence. This you you were seeing things, but you know there wasn't much of an opportunity. Um, to, to be working it. I mean, number four, um, you know, there's something about, you know, the, the, the position of the ducks and, and, and the heads and especially the one in the background twisting, you know, which is really kind of, um, you know, just heart rending seeing them in this cage. And then um, I think it's the next one with the, the chickens. Um, is that full frame? Yeah. Um, you know, again, there was something that, you know, I, again, the, the chickens, I like where the chickens are, but it's almost as if, you know, there was a moment that was about to happen with those guys in the background um, that could have been really interesting. But, you know, again, how much how much play did you have to be, you know, rolling around in the grass waiting for this moment to happen when you're there to, to, to buy birds, not to photograph birds? So, I mean, I really think that, that given the challenges that you were up against, um, you know, you actually made some some very interesting um, some interesting frames. Okay, five. Can you hit five again, Joe? It it didn't it didn't come up full frame. Is that see what I mean? Oh yeah. Uh, I don't know what's happening there. I see. Because yeah, I kept thinking thumbnail that looked like a much more interesting frame, but when it comes up, you're not seeing that guy, which is what holds that picture together. Yeah, I uh, let's see what I can do to mess around oh, with it. Anyway, um, huh? Sorry about that. Yeah, we need to fix that. I'll just keep playing with this a little bit. Okay, but so th those are my thoughts. I mean, I, and I suspect that almost all of you on this call have been in these these situations where, um, you know, you, you're you're limited in how you can work it. So um, you get what you get, but I think under the circumstances, you, you made a couple of really interesting frames. Uh, I don't know why the images are cropping all of a sudden. I'm not sure that anything changed, so I'll just continue to try and sort that out. Uh, it's really unfortunate because we really need to see all the images. Uh, Tracking oh, the eye on the keyboard, it might take the metadata. Oh, yeah, okay. Thank you. Let's see how that goes. 
that's a little better. Yeah, almost better. Yeah, almost. Yeah, and we're keeping the the metadata actually because we want to, we want we know some people are interested in you know the ISOs and and how these things were shot. Um, two com two comments from me is that I, I feel that some of these images would be great if there was a, a little more time spent in framing them. And this one could probably just use a crop on the right and the bottom so that we're really zeroing in on the bird. Uh, it could have been done in person, but again, you might try be trying to be uh, conspicuous and might be inconspicuous and uh, you might have a little, a little less time. Um, color grading, color grading, color grading. I would love for Ira to spend a couple hours on these images getting really nuanced. Um, I think that this image could really come to life with really, really careful color grading. I love that um, the exposure is really good. I like that you can see all of this, the dirtiness on the truck, um, those like, oh, yeah, I, I like that. You don't want to, you want to sort of be able to see more of the peacock. You want to be able to see this bird. This bird down here is an afterthought. I don't really want him to be. I want to see more details in here. And um, so I think what you could do as a project is spend a lot of time slowly tweaking these these birds forward a little bit. Kathy, do you have do you have a thought on that? Um, I would say first of all, when it comes to cropping, I'm not a purist. I mean, obviously, you want to get it in camera, but when you don't. Um, you know, it, it was like the dead calves in, in the truck. The minute I cropped in on that, all of a sudden, and now we're talking about a photograph. So don't be afraid to crop. And um, again, within reason, um, you know, Photoshop is your friend. <laughs> you know, you go go in there and do what you can to make the image as compelling as it, as it can be. And um, and again, as I, as I said earlier, I, I'm, I'm not particularly technical, but but there were some images along the way um, with, with these stories that I was taking in into Lightroom and I was saying, okay, now we have a frame. Um, so it, it is important when you show your work to make sure that you have, you, you've done that, that legwork. You know, you, you've gone in and you've done the correcting. Mm. I think this image could use some correcting as well. Uh, if you look closely, you can see the eye of the bird. Um, but you you could bring it out more. You could just you know work at bringing this this animal out more. And I'd be curious to know if you had other images just with like you know slightly different angles. And then this person back here is quite distracting. So I'm very curious to know um, what images you have on either side of this. Um, and you know you had nice dull lighting to work with. I think it would be really cool to spend some time with this images, this image, even bringing out some of the rust, uh, the rusty colors here, and maybe making things pop just a little bit more. Um, yeah. Oh, also, people. I have a question for Kathy. People who are caught in a facial expression that is not flattering. We see that, we see that often and like sometimes it's it's humorous or whimsical but then sometimes it kind of plays into how we feel about the people sometimes as animal rights activists. Like if we're unhappy with the people because of everything that's happening sometimes isn't it just too tempting to include a picture of a person not uh not looking their best. Um well it can be a cheap shot, but it really depends on the moment. It depends on the situation, I think. And I think it also depends on on your access. I mean, don't forget, I mean, a lot of what you guys are doing, you don't necessarily have the permits to be there. So if you are going to take the risk of showing someone, you better be very thoughtful in, in, in how you, you do that. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's very photojournalistic to have faces, you know, doing all sorts of things. <laughs> uh, but sometimes I question it. And actually, I, I really appreciate the um, 
the facial expressions. There are so many good expressions in this image, which makes me think it's a really good capture. Uh, just people are really internal, aren't they? All of these people are internal, but then you have this animal center stage. And I also think with color grading, uh, the goose could come out a little bit more, but everyone's involved with themselves. Even the little boy is like, you know, smiling, having a nice time, but nothing is about the animal and the animal is, you know, a big part of the story. So. Anyway, kudos to this one. This is a great frame. Okay, needing to move on. Here we go, next story. Scrolling to my notes. So uh, in 2023, Molly photographed um, in Chile and Argentina, went to a variety of farms, uh, working with we animals and Synergia, did I say that? And um, witnessed consistently heartbreaking locations and stories and situations, um, which left a lasting psychological imprint on her. Um, she says it also affirmed the definitive intersection between poverty and the objectively inhumane conditions in which animals raised for food exist. Uh, we have a few more images for Molly. Uh, Molly submitted nine and then Kathy went in and had a, a broader look at more of her work and actually we so we pulled in a number of images and here we go. And then I took some liberties. I was working on this image. So I just sort of quickly made it in black and white. It's before, after. Okay, Kathy. Um, okay, well, you know, first of all, Molly, you had you had asked, you know, ab about the edit, and um, so normally I wouldn't have had this many to throw in, but I was just learning how to use the We Animal system, so I, I thought, you know, you you had asked, so I thought, well, let's let's see what else you, you had there, but um, again, what I want to say is when you guys are working undercover, which I, I, I understand you were in this particular situation, I'm, I'm very sympathetic to the fact that it, it can be challenging to, to work these situations. Um, and, I, and I think you, you had some very powerful frames in spite of what you were, you were up against. Um, um, you know, I think particularly um, number three, the pig with the inflamed teats. Um, number eight, the, the little calf with um, the horse. And then uh, also uh, number two, um, you know, is, is, is really, um, it, it's, a heart, it's a heartbreaking photograph in spite of sort of the, you know, bad light and, and, and everything else that, that you, in, you were encountering there. Um, what, you know, what I felt uh, in looking at, at you know, I, I know that, that number five and uh, number six, seven, you felt, um, really sort of conveyed some of the, the horror that you were experiencing there. But I have to say for me, visually, I don't, I don't feel it. Um, it they're a little too, uh, for me, they're a little too obscure and I'm, and I'm not necessarily um, experiencing what, what you did when I, when I look at these, these two photographs. Um, so, you know, one reason I was bringing some other things in, though, was just, again, thinking narratively and, and a little bit about that balance. You know, for instance, um, you've, you've got the one image of the chickens, but I, I felt that, I think it was number 11, looking at, you know, all those chickens, but the one that's front and center, um, you, it, you can see the, the, the feathers are coming off. It looks like it's got irritated skin. Um, you know, it's just in that muck and chickens. And so I felt maybe it was doing a little bit more for the storytelling 
and and trying to convey the the situations under which um, you know these animals are are kept, um, and then um, I found um, you know number uh, number four is really impactful, but I felt number fifteen might be kind of um, an, an easier sense of um, I'm, I'm getting those faces at the same time that they're all mushed in there. Um, it's a little bit cleaner. The other one is, it sort of gives you that sense of like, whoa, but you know, I'm looking in at these guys with their sort of heart tattoos on them. And it's just like, it's, it's anything but love. Um, because again, uh, there's an image that, that I, I was looking for and I, 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 I guess I didn't pull. You had a few scenes where you were actually pulled back um, at these auction um, houses. And if I were putting this together narratively, I'm probably gonna want a big scene like that where I see all of these different pens and things and I get that sense of where I am. And then I'm gonna go, I wanna I want go in tight on you know the horror that these animals are smooshed in there like this, you know, whether it's four, whether it's 15, you really start to, I think that's sort of one, two of captivity and then how they're just smooshed in there um, narratively might might sustain the story um, a little bit more. Um, you know, I think 12, 13, 14, they're all sort of like, you know, God, these poor little guys chained. I, I will say in spite of, you know, framing and lighting and, and you know, you can debate that what you have in here initially with with number two might overall still be the strongest frame because there is a certain horror to this this photograph i mean it's just it's it's it's, it's heartbreaking in its simplicity um so it, it it is very powerful uh i i brought in just you know for for consideration where the 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 guys you know they've got their their hands up on these little guys and they're basically forcing those bottles into their mouths and, um, you know, looking again, thinking how you might build this out narratively. Do you need that, that human touch, even though it's, it's, it's a very unpleasant touch? Um, so those are just things I think, you know, when you sit down and, and you start putting these things together, um, you know, again, a little ebb and flow. I like coming in tighter and seeing this, this presumably diseased chicken you know, I, I, I love, I love, I think you did a fabulous job with, with, with the pig and the piglet, the calf and the horse. I mean, some of these, you know, are, are really strong images made um, under challenging conditions. And again, I love that touch of these sort of, you know, uninterested people in the background. But when I look at a picture like this, I will, I will say, you know, Joe has been hitting it hard on a couple of these stories about going in and correcting these images. This, this, this could just have um, a better feel, um, better balance between uh, stepping, stepping the animals off of the background and each other and pulling out those eyes if they're there, which would make it just even that more compelling. Yeah, I, I didn't know I'd be going so hard on uh, emphasizing color grading, but I'm going to do that again in this story, Molly. Um, and I also might, you know, crop, see this up here, these corners, these top mm -hmm. parts of the building, they're really bugging me. And maybe they're bugging me because I know they could just disappear <laughs> with a little bit of cropping. You would still keep these uh, distracted people who are, you know, confining animals, but not looking at the animals that... Uh, I, that's a very important element. You can still keep them and just crop in a little bit. And I might crop some of that that floor just so we're really focusing uh, on the animals and and doing some delicate color grading so that we're seeing more of the horse's face. Um, just so, as someone once told me, like pick the most important important part of the image and make all of your color grading about that part of the image. Um, I thought that um, I looked at this image for a long time and I really appreciate the crowding, uh, the fencing, the paint, you know, we don't know what those marks mean, but it's probably not something good. Maybe it's veterinarian. Maybe some of them are going on a certain truck for slaughter. It does pose a lot of questions, but my eye cannot settle anywhere in this picture. And, um, and important things like I think this 
this guy here is so crowded that he's mounting the one in front of him, but you have to spend a long, long time before you see that. Uh, we've almost got some faces, but we don't. So I'd be curious to know what images you have on either side of this edit. Like maybe this animal is looking up. Who noticed you? Did they look up at you? That might make this a stronger image. And um, then when I saw this, I thought, yes, much, much better. You get more of a sense of absolutely everything. And there is that individual looking up at you, making a connection when an animal is looking at you, at your lens, they're looking at the audience and will forevermore. And that's exactly what we want um, when we want to connect with animals. And um, let's see, number four, number five. Number five, I actually really liked it. I, I see it as, my guess what you saw is that the bones are similar to the walkway and the grooves in the walkway. And it just makes some makes things, it's just a good contrast of like the natural and the industrial. And I think that is a neat statement. I think it's an artistic image. I think that it needs uh, work, uh, color grading again, to really make the impact. But uh, uh, Kathy, what do you think? I know this wasn't your, your favorite image. You said you weren't feeling it, but- I what need a head. I need a head. Sorry? I need a head. I, I, I oh. yeah, I, I just, um, I think what you're talking about in terms of the contrasting um, texture between the walkway and, and the bones is really compelling, but um, I, I keep going to the backside of the animal and, and what I want, what, what's gonna pull me in is, is a face. Mm. Thank you. Um, I made a note about bars and fences. Let's look at this one. And we see this in a number of the images presented today. Um, let's just give this a little crop. Uh, sometimes you want it to explicitly show the fences, but sometimes you're really trying to get past them and the gates to show the individual. So in this case, um, I don't think the, the gate is helping anything. And same with uh, this, oop, sorry. Ta -da. And same with this image as well. Um, and when I look at this image, I also think, get down, get down, get close. Uh, that's advice I give really often in photo critiques. Uh, too often we keep the human vantage point, you know, five foot five, six feet tall, pointing downward. And sometimes that stands out as very obvious to me and it, it does here in this picture. I think, you know, that's a really, it's a really good comment, Joe. I guess in, in situations like this, what do you do when you're not there as theoretically as a photographer, when you would get down and you would try to work it? And, you know, in, in, in so many of these instances, it's off the hip or it's just, you know, shoot and run or, I mean, how, how would you, what, what would your advice be in these situations? Mm, well, I find the picture on the right much better because you've gotten down. Uh, if you have two lenses here, uh, first of all, in a, if you have two lenses or, a, you know, a zoom lens and time, I would get even closer. Of course, they're going to back away, but then they're going to be curious about you. I can tell they already are. And they're going to they're going to come around and sort of fill in that patch of dirt on the bottom right. And then you're going to have a frame full of animals. But there's a lot you can do with the long lens as well. Uh, even shooting vertically. So you you get sort of a sense of the building. Like I know that building is full of birds, um, but we don't see the length of the building. We don't see, you know, thousands or even tens of thousands, uh, which we possibly could. So a few thoughts there. Um, I see Vic saying need to move on, need to, let's do it. <laughs> Thank you for keeping us on track. Now over to Stefano's images. Let's increase these thumbnails a bit. Okay, so Stefano Bellacci in Italy was photographing uh, on the West African Sea, um, let's see, with Sea Shepherd Global. And uh, Amazingly, it seems he had the opportunity to go on to Chinese fishing vessels and other vessels. Um, 
Stefano, I can't read all the text. You uh, were really elaborate and that's awesome. But uh, for the purpose of time, uh, I see that he has an analysis here of which images he thinks are good, which are almost images, uh, which seem like not good images, but actually contain a lot of information about uh, the fishing industry. And um, I think we're just going to um, start by going one by one and we will launch in. Kathy. Um, first of all, I, I can appreciate how, how challenging this must have been. And the fact that you got on board is, is huge. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think you, you have some interesting frames here. And, you know, the thing that, that I would say that, that did really strike me, I mean, for instance, you know, I, I think number one is almost a great frame. Um, there's so much going on in it that 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 I love. Uh, you know, I, I, I love this the, the, the hands on the left hand side and that shadow. Uh, you know, I, I love him holding the fish and and and, and the shovel in his hand. But um, this has happened in in a couple of, of of your frames. Is that there's always something that's in the background that's kind of getting in the way, like somebody's like this guy with the yellow hat. Like if 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 there had just been a little bit of separation between the two of them, I think it would have elevated this image to something really special. It's it's good, it's good. Um, and, and again, the fact that you were on board was amazing, but I keep, I keep going to the guy in the background ultimately, instead of staying focused on the guy in the foreground. And, um, and again, I think this is an image that could have benefited from a little bit of, um, color correcting and, and, and pulling him off of that background a bit. And the same thing happened in um, frame five. I mean, it's just, just something to, to be aware of. And, and again, I know you, you described how challenging it was to be on deck and dangerous, but you know, not only, you know, he's holding up this octopus, but not only is there something coming out from behind his hands, um, that, that detracts, there's somebody standing behind him with that plastic bag that detracts. So you've got, you've got good stuff going on in foreground, but you've got stuff happening in the background that's, that's taking away from these images. And um, so I, I do think it, it's something to, to, to be thinking about. Um, I, I felt like in number uh, eight and, and 10, you're below deck. Maybe you had a little bit more control over the situation, maybe it wasn't quite so slippery, but um, I, I, I liked I liked the mood in in both of these images. I, I felt that the moments were were slightly off. The guy on the left, um, you know, I wish his 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 eyes had been open, or I wish you know maybe his hands were up, or he had a fish or something. But you've created a very interesting mood in here, just the way that the the you know the 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 mist is, is, is sort of rising, the guy in the door in the background, the guy going into the door off to the other side. It's 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 compositionally, I think it was it was quite nice. I just wish there was a little bit more um, of a moment. And the same thing on the right, I felt, um, you know, you've, you've got this really nice thing that's happening with, with you know, the, the, the Chinese man there in the middle, the guy against that sort of um, silvery wall you know again in, in terms of moment i might have hoped for this man on the left a little bit more profile um same thing with the guy uh on, on the right maybe a little bit more face or profile but in in terms of, of of where you're putting yourself and and seeing a scene i felt that both of these were really um were coming together not not quite there but they were coming together and, and it was nice seeing um you have a, a frame that is uh, number 11, where you've got the artisanal fisherman with that huge um, tanker in the background. And it's a really beautiful haunting image. And it says, um, it, 
in, in so many ways, it, it, even though that's not a fishing vessel in the background, it says so much about what um, this story is about and what these artisanal fishermen are, are, are facing. So I, I felt, wow, it, it's, um, it, it's sweet, it's simple, it's straightforward, but it, it does a lot of heavy lifting in terms of the storytelling here. And then, you know, I, I, I love details, but um, I think in this particular instance, um, you know, you needed to make a, a choice uh, between six and seven. In essence, you've got seven covered in number eight. So I, I, I might have gone just for the, the, the dying eel, but the dying eel also as a detail sort of gives, um, it, it, it gets in close on, on, on this massive fish on the deck and all of a sudden, you know, where they become anonymous, they're just sort of writhing bodies on a deck. And, and here you actually show that, hey, something's on this deck and it's dying. You know, this is the cost. This is the cost. Um, so it, it was probably a little bit more powerful as a storytelling image for me. Um, Joe? Uh, something that struck me is uh, the uniformity of colors that I'm seeing throughout the story, which I really appreciate. It's not totally uniform, but the dominant colors recur, which create a cohesion that I really appreciate. Um, dominant colors being blue and orange, and of course, like with blacks and grays, but uh, I like that they're popping everywhere. Uh, something that drives me mad about this image is that we almost see the full Actung beware uh, sign up here. I wish we were seeing that because it's just such a metaphor. Like you have to beware of absolutely everything in this picture. Um, I thought you had better boat pictures. Um, this one feels like more of a snapshot. Uh, I really like the amount of information in this picture. And I think that it could be brought more to life with some color grading. Yeah, I'm a broken record on this uh, critique. I'm also curious to know what shots are on either side because I find this boat over here, maybe it's the Sea Shepherd um, dinghy, uh, that's distracting. Uh, I'd love to get rid of that. Maybe you have a frame without that boat there, or maybe a little more hidden. But I like that we see an ocean and a boat and people and nets and the action of the fish falling onto the deck. I even like that you have the flag blowing and a bird in the background. So I think there are really, a lot of really nice elements there. What I would say about this is that, again, it, it sort of echoes a little bit about what I'm saying about where things are matter. And that boat in the background, it's not that there's a boat there, it's where it is. And if it had yeah. even been out and framed between the yeah. lines on either side, it's not that I don't want the boat there, I want the boat in a better place. I agree. And I thought that uh, this image, this image followed really nicely from this one. You have the action and then you have, you know, the next step. This is what they're doing with all of the fish. And then I agree with Kathy. These two are quite similar. And I sort of you know, put myself in your position in this picture. And I don't know if you had a lot of time, but I imagine you sort of dancing around this scene and taking a few images. And uh, I wonder if you have an image of these individuals from above. Uh, you might have had something with less distraction in the image. Um, I, I think this is stunning. And Kathy, I had to laugh when you pointed out that this is not a fishing vessel in the background because my mind <laughs> interpreted like, you know, the small against the big. And I'm like, oh, the big fish. Oh, it's not a fishing vessel. Like I was totally fooled. <laughs> we all fish fillets on that tanker. <laughs> oh, maybe. Uh, but yes, and you, you, this is like ghostly, it's haunted. And you even have this man looking back at this big uh, vessel possibly. So what a stunning image. Um, and uh, well, so let's, I had comments on one, three, four, five. Uh, I hadn't noticed that plastic bag in the background, Kathy, and now I can't unsee it. <laughs> And uh, you're you're so right. Um, I wonder, Stefano, if you could have just moved yourself to the right a little bit and had that uh, person blocking the bag, and also some some gentle color correcting might actually foreground that octopus 
even more. It's such a busy picture. So what can you do with the color editing to reduce distraction elsewhere to bring the octopus forward? That's it. Okay, we have two left. This is a photo story uh, shot in India by Sadeep, Sadeep Maiti. And uh, this was shot in West Bengal about the human elephant conflict, uh, which is getting worse every year as Asiatic elephants from nearby Dalma forest roam freely, destroying paddies and fields, agricultural produce and mud huts. So there's major conflict in which people are fighting and uh, killing the elephants, uh, hitting them with bows and arrows, firecrackers, um, stones, anything and everything they have to keep the elephants away. Uh, this leads to tragic casualties on both sides. Uh, the reason for the increase boils down to human settlements and the resulting pressure caused by linear infrastructure by railways, roadways, canals, and so on. So these elephants no longer have corridors. I'm so excited about this story. I feel like it's a story that's just ready to explode visually. Uh, you have some, it's like a, a great couple of first steps. And Sudeep, I don't know how much time you have, you have spent there in this community, but I think you have really good groundwork. And the more you spend time shooting in low light and very difficult lighting when you're trying to balance the low light and the torches, the more you practice at that, the more these Im these images will uh, <laughs> uh, will be more uh, technical. Some of them are just a little bit soft, and I know with more time you'll be able to hone in on just uh, getting laser focused with the uh, with the sharpness. I feel like there are some filler images here. Um, this one, number seven, uh, it's okay, but it's not enhancing the story the way some of the images are. Um, I want to say that these two images shot in the daylight, they are important for the story, but I'd love to see these images shot in low light. Uh, do you have those images? Can you go back and photograph more of this, you know, elephant, uh, this paraphernalia that keeps elephants away? This, I mean, this bar in the door, what is, what is that? Is that like to prevent elephants from going through? I'm not quite sure, but, um, I mean, this, uh, this is really important, but let's see it in a way that matches the rest of the story. Uh, I'm really optimistic to see this story in a year if you continue with it, because I think it's it's going to improve. It's going to get much, much stronger. Kathy. Um, well, I, first of all, this is a story that, that really does need to be told. Um, so I, I was so glad to see it come up. But the, my first question was, how much time um, did you have with this community? Because it, it is a start. Um, it is it is not it 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 does not yet convey the enormity of the problem and um, just how dangerous it is uh, for these communities to um, live in proximity to 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 the elephants. And I do think um, you know I again I I I don't often. <laughs> dabble in correction, but I did take a couple of these um, in into Lightroom to see what I could do with them. And and, and number one, especially, um, yes, it's very much on the edge, but it can be with a little tweaking, it can be a stronger image. And, and I think in many ways that that sort of threading that technical needle and staying a little bit on the edge again underscores um, what the what the story is all about. You know how. Um, how on the fly you have to be in order to make these these photographs. So th this is a situation in, in, with storytelling where, where sometimes the imperfect picture is the right picture. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you're going to have to get uh, a little bit more nuanced in, in working in this um, 
in this light and and in how you're 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 tweaking those photographs. Um, but this 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 is a story that still needs to be told, and I, and I hope that you can go back and spend more time with this community because one thing, especially that that I'm not feeling, um, is what it's like for for this community to to, to live like this. Um, again, as 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 Joe said, you know, ten and eleven. I think those those are pictures that you should be going back and making. Um, in, in, in more interesting light. And I think in a more interesting, um, ways, but I also, you know, I want, what's it like to be in one of these homes at night where that, that, that barricade is the only thing between you and elephants. Um, you know, I felt a bit of a disconnect, the distance between you and the, um, the, the Hulu who are out on these patrols. Um, so again, I think if, if this is a group that's willing to have you out there and, and you can give it the time, you're on to a story that that is is so important. But I think you've got to start and you've got to go back. I hope you can go back. This this is a really lovely frame, but um yeah. It needs more technical care. Yeah, and again, I wanna I wanna feel what it's like for this community and I'm not, I'm not getting that at all. Hmm. That's a good observation. Okay. We're on to our not our last story by Thomas Makovitz. This was shot in the Ukraine, just going to my notes. It's called War Dogs. It documents uh, what Tommy calls the animal rescue pipeline during the beginning of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, March 2022. Volunteers and supplies flowed into Poland and Ukraine from Western Europe. Uh, uh, Europe refugees and their companion animals fled uh, in the opposite direction. Uh, War Dogs is one chapter of the Sanctuary documentary, a long-term multimedia documentary about animals and the people who rescue them in our world's major, uh, in our world's major challenges. Um, Thomas says he would love feedback on which elements are missing from this as a story and ideas on sequencing for different purposes. Here we go. Happy. Um, I think there's some really nice work here, and I, and I think it's a strong start on a story. Um, although I guess I would question whether what's happening on the ground in Ukraine have sort of um, moved beyond this. But um, based on your your question about sequencing, I, I actually had had moved it around because I felt narratively for me this this it wasn't making any sense. Um, I, I felt like you had two, two, two parts of a story, and I was looking for the bridge between them. Um, so what I what I had done was, um, well, first of all, I don't know if this is possible. I took seven and eight out. I just I just took them out, and then narratively um, was working with starting with. Um, if we can go back to the grid. Um, so make number five one. Hmm. And, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I can actually move them. Oh, I don't, oh. if you're in the catalog, I think you can. Um, <laughs> make number six, the second image. And then make number 11, the third. Number 11 now is number, take that into fourth. This and is then, a re, an overhaul. <laughs> and then number, number 12 becomes number five. Okay, number nine becomes number six. 
This is so exciting. Number, um, let's see, number seven, or I'm sorry, number eight becomes number seven. Okay, number 12 becomes number eight. Okay, uh, let's see, and then, okay, so that's where I'd left it with getting rid of 11 and 12. So it's it's linear in terms of, of the narrative, um, but it, it for me, it started talking about people and their pets and, and this exodus um, out of Ukraine. Um, I think number number two is just an absolutely beautiful um, photograph of this this little one and, and the dog, um, and, and really sort of pulls pulls it all together. And uh, I loved the detail of the dog uh, with the passport. It sort of really gets to the fact that whoa, these people are going places, and the, the dogs are too. Um, and then okay. You're on the train or the bus or whatever with number five. People are leaving, and you know now you're you're working with this 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 Polish group, um, and and for me, I I think you know there's some really beautiful and emotional work here leaving Ukraine, but it it feels like the 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 story sort of takes off really um, with with more narrative oomph when you're when you're with this this Polish team. I mean, I think number eight, and I think again with a little processing to pull that dog out um, and, and make it more central in the image would really help this because it's a beautiful and, and powerful frame. And, um, but, but here it starts to be like, okay, now we're talking rescue. Look at this, the guy's, you know, he's putting on his, his, his bulletproof vest. They're rescuing this beautiful dog, you know, dog in, in transit. Um, I, I wondered if um, with the image where you're sort of shooting down, on, on the transport uh, and the vans and things, if you had that opportunity to then get back down on the ground, were any of these animals being comforted? Did we see them going into homes? Or, you know, again, I feel like you've got to start on something. I, and I don't know if it's possible to go back, but um, that's narratively, that's how it felt for me. Like you you had two sort of different stories that were looking for that that bridge, whether it was someone having to give up their dog when they got to Poland or someone being reunited with their animal who had been rescued. Um, so I, I think you've got some really, really um, nice, nice moments in here. Um, but but narratively, I'm not sure that the story is is complete yet. Hmm. I do really like the story. I like the uh, the color tones throughout that are matching, and we have a blue theme in all of the images except for two. Um, yeah, this uh, this one I always Tommy. I know you love this image, and I like what's happening, and I've just never been able to get over the green and this little bit of highlight up here and I know you know this is the way the, the bus is lit and it's that that's that <laughs> but, uh, I actually I suspect that I'm wrong I'm the wrong one in like you know suggesting that it get edited out especially because you know it matches so nicely with this uh, green jacket <laughs> uh, this image I spend a lot of time looking at, at this image and uh, how it work and it how it works and it doesn't work. And I, I said in an earlier comment, pick what you feel is the central moment of the image and color grade to bring people's attention to that. Uh, I'm just too distracted by things in this picture, even though I really like that you went up there. I like, I like the angle, I like a lot of things, but this sack of food on the left is just killing me. Um, I would reduce the, um, uh, the highlights there, uh, because I just don't want my eye to keep going over the, there. Um, the reflective tape on the vans uh, up ahead of the white one is distracting me. So, and then I'm curious about these dogs that are just a little bit in the shade uh, at the at the front of the picture. Uh, anyway, it just sort of takes me a long time to get through this image, and I think that some. Uh, careful editing of highlights, I guess, could, uh, and the shadows could improve that. I think being on the ground could improve it. 
I, I just I, I feel I feel that way about the picture. I feel like you're 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 there and you're making sort of that initial foray into what's this situation look like, but then it's not looking like much from up there, and I think you needed to be down. Hmm. This one, um, on the one hand, there's so much to look at. I mean, the dog's hairdo, the passport, there's some plastic thing in the background distracting me. The guns are really powerful. You look at the foreground soldier and the gun and then you see, wow, there's a hand, you know, on a on a gun in the background as well. You even have that nice detail of the, um, the suitcase rolling in the top left, which I'm just noticing now. And um, yet I can't help but wonder if this could have been a better frame if you just bent your knees a little bit and got um, so that you're not shooting down. I think it's the shooting down that makes it compositionally for me less strong. Um, if you had got down a little bit and faced the dog, maybe we'd see what was going on more with that soldier in the back, more with the movement of people, uh, more what's happening in the background. The movement of people is really important in this story. Um, it's funny, I had made notes. I had made notes talk about images one, three, four, five, and 11 or something like that. But I'm like, they're out of order now. <laughs> and I had done some reordering as well, including of this. This was the second image. And uh, I felt like it was just, it was, it uh, stood out and I think it belonged more elsewhere, but we've, we've sorted that. I actually really appreciate what you did here. Um, what else do I have? Um, I think that's it. It's very strong. And uh, I know Thomas's work quite well. And I have seen uh, the incredible improvements in framing and color grading. So just keep at it. Uh, Victoria says, nice job on timing. So it's 131. <laughs> uh, this has been fun. Kathy, do you want to add anything else to, no, to this story? No. Again, as I said when we started, I, I think it's really um, it's really brave to not only show your work and be willing to be critiqued, but to let your colleagues join in. And um, so it, it was really an, an honor to be able to look at your work and talk about it and um, good luck. Thanks everyone. And uh, do we have, Kathy, do you have time? And do we generally have time for it to answer a few of the questions if there are questions in the comment section? See a lot of thank yous. You're very welcome. <laughs> and we're going to no questions. So we're going to make some notes, uh, some notes available. And uh, well, the this will be on YouTube, so you can share it around. We'll let people know it's available. Uh, no, Victoria says we won't be making notes available. So this is uh, this is what you'll have. And uh, we do look forward to doing more critiques. As I said, we'll be doing one of individual images. I find that's gonna be much harder. What about without like more context? What do you think, Kathy? Um, yes, yes and no. I mean, it can always be interesting to, you know, because again, you can tell a story in a single image. So, mm -hmm. you know, and a single image can also be so reflective of how someone sees consistently, so. Okay, that will be fun. So I think we will sign off. Thank you. We're seeing the uh, thank yous come in. And again, you're all very welcome. We look forward to doing it again. Okay, thanks so much for your time, everyone. And uh, all you put into putting this together. And Kathy, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Take care.